Within a thousandth of a second of the detonation of this bomb, a fireball would form, reaching out for two miles in every direction, four miles across. Within this area, temperatures would rise to 20 million degrees Fahrenheit, which is hotter than the surface of the sun, and everything would be vaporized. The buildings, the people, the trees, the upper level of the earth itself. To a distance of four miles in every direction, the blast would generate winds in excess of 600 miles per hour and blast pressures greater than 25 pounds per square inch. Forces of this magnitude can destroy anything that human beings can build. Underground shelters would collapse. To a distance of six miles in every direction, the heat would be so intense that automobile sheet metal would melt. To a distance of 10 miles in every direction, the blast would still generate winds in excess of 200 miles per hour and blast pressures greater than 10 pounds per square inch. Forces of this magnitude would level wood frame buildings, masonry buildings. A modern steel and concrete building would see its walls and floors swept out. Just the steel skeleton would remain. To a distance of 16 miles in every direction, the heat would be so intense that everything flammable would burn. Wood, paper, cloth, heating oil, gasoline, it would all ignite. Hundreds of thousands of fires, which would, over the next half hour, coalesce into a giant firestorm, 32 miles across, covering over 800 square miles. Within this entire area, the temperature would rise to 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. All the oxygen would be consumed, and every living thing would die. Beyond this great firestorm, the destruction would continue, and there would be hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, suffering severe injuries. Crush injuries, penetrating injuries, extensive burns, blindness from retinal burning. All of these people would need intensive medical care, but it would not be available, because most of the hospitals would be destroyed, most of the doctors and nurses and other health professionals would be dead, There'd be no electricity to run the ventilators and the cardiac monitors. Most of the medical supplies would be exhausted within hours. And the vast majority of these people would not receive any medical care at all. They would die alone and in great pain. And if this attack were part of a large-scale war between the United States and Russia, this level of destruction would be visited on every metropolitan area in the United States and in Russia. A study which Physicians for Social Responsibility published in 2003 showed that if just 300 of the warheads in the Russian arsenal detonated over urban targets in the United States, something between 75 and 100 million people would die in the first half hour. In addition, the entire economic infrastructure would be destroyed. The transportation system, the communications network, the public health system, all the things that a modern industrial country requires to maintain its population. All of these things would be gone. And it is probable that in the ensuing months, the vast majority of the American and Russian population, those who were not killed outright in the first half hour of the attack, they too would die from starvation, from exposure, from epidemic disease, from radiation poisoning. As unimaginable as these direct consequences are, they are not the worst part of the story. Here too, it is the environmental consequences that we need to really look at.